You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. MyAx is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever-compelling Options Insider Radio Network. Coming off the hottest month, November, just a banger by any stretch of the word. Of course, our overall options volume, huge month, third highest in history of the options biz and the busiest month in the history, the 15 plus year history of this network. So thanks to all of you folks out there who are just binging on the on-demand side, just driving up my bandwidth bills. We love you all. We also love all you folks who've taken the plunge, joined us over there on the pro. Welcome to all of you new folks. Congratulations to our pro trading crate winner out there this week as well. Love to see all the new folks flocking in there. If you guys Want to join that party? You want to have a chance to win a pro trading crate just like Robbie Brewster did this week? You want to get exclusive pro Q&As like we did with the uh, once in future and now present Dr. Bix like we did with the Flow Master last week? You want to get options oddities at the end of the week? You don't want your broadcast week to end with volatility views. You want more content in your lives and in your ear holes. You want the exclusive podcast feed, everything else, live access to all the fun stuff that we do and a whole bunch more. You know where that journey begins. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. And let's see who's joining us on the old Vol Views program today. First, joining us from the dark, the stormy, the terrifying, who in God's name would live there? Well, I guess it's this guy. He lives on those dark and stormy shores of Maine. He is the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi. From OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to the show. Why in God's name do you live in such a hellhole, sir? I ask my that myself that every day, but today it's a beautiful sunny day on the coast of Maine. So I <laughs> guess there's there's birds, there's squirrels, there's fish, there's oysters, there's clams. So, you know, if you like if you like nature, this is a good place. If you don't like nature, 
Yeah, probably the wrong place for you to live. Nature and I on a bit of an adversarial relationship, but hey, you know, I like the fact you wake up every morning and you say, why in God's name do I live in this hellhole? I love that. I love that picture every morning. That's how you start your day. That sounds like a rock lobster way to start his day. That is in keeping with your character. Let's just, it goes with the gimmick. Let's just put it that way. All right. <laughs> Let's keep on rolling out there to the Mayax hot seat this week. He had so much fun answering your questions in our pro Q&A hot seat. He decided to take a break from his ever-present commutes back and forth from Gary, Indiana, up to here. No, he's somewhere else in Indiana. <laughs> he is Mr. Russell Rhodes, uh, holding fort over there at the Kelly School of Business, also the author of one or two or half a dozen options and volatility-oriented tomes, and had so much fun answering your questions. Decided to come back for Vol Views. Mr. Rhodes, welcome back to Volatility Views, sir. I am, as always, I'm very happy to be here. As you mentioned, I'm... I'm calling out in transit. Remember, hands at 10 and 2, eyes on the road. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Um, so I'm kind of half in nature. Nature's outside of me right now, and it's not pretty. <laughs> yeah, it was snowing pretty bad earlier today, so hopefully it's not dusting up your commute, sir. Not quite yet, but as I get closer to Chicago, I get a little bit more worried about it. There we go. All right, so as he approaches his imminent demise, we shall approach the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's kick off the vol review, the portion of the show. We break down the week that was and indeed still is from a vol trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity, all sorts of fun perspectives. And coming into the start of the show, looks like we just ticked, just ticked red again, listeners. Uh, the market started off a little bit red. Then it seemed like we were going to do what we have done many times before, which was trend north, trend towards the green. And that's pretty much what we were doing about an hour before showtime, every single major index was really hanging out in the green. Listen, it seemed like another green end of the week because people don't need an excuse to buy them this market these days. <laughs> and now as we kick off the show, we have trended ever so slightly red again. S&P off about 0.15%. Dow off about a quarter of a percent. NASDAQ pretty much slightly, slightly red, about 0.05%. We'll see how long that hangs out. It seems like the 39 half level is where we're kind of vacillating around out there in the S&P right now. We got down towards it this morning, then bounced off of it. Now it looks like we're heading back towards it again. All this mixed to red action on the day, listeners, means vol is up from last week's low. We remember, we were in the teens last week, listeners. We kissed an 18 handle ever so briefly. Now we're getting back north again, back up into the low 20s. Spikes when we kicked off the show, 2370, up about two points exactly. From where it was this time last week. And VIX Cash 2240 when we kicked off the show, up about almost three, about 2.8 points. So on the show last week, listeners, we were in a 19 handle. So a wee bit away from that right now, listeners. Our old friend VVIX kind of hanging out stubbornly at about an 85. It's been there for the last couple of days, and that's up about three points from where it was this time last week. 85 is kind of splitting the uprights for a ball of vol. You know, it's not quite 75 where you know. That's too low. It's going to bounce off there, but not quite 95 where it's threatening triple digits. We know things are maybe getting a little frothy. It's kind of just hanging out at a nice even keel 85 right now, which is probably why it's been there for a little bit. And speaking of all of all, our old friend, the Viking, man, this thing can move. <laughs> Last week, it dropped 34 points. Uh, this week, it is back up 39 points, back up to a 101 out there. By the way, we have just recovered from our all time low out there. In the Viking of 5727. That was back on right at the end of October, October 28th. So we have flirted with some lows. We got down into a 60 handle again last week. So this Viking just flipping all over the place, listeners. You can check that out for yourselves, as well as many other metrics over there on that new volatility hub that Simon was all excited about on the show last week. If you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, if you missed last week's show, check out the volatility hub. Dot com is the place for you to be able to send you to T3 to find things like the Viking and everything else. Bitvol, it's all there at the Volatility Hub now, as well as spikes and everything else. So it's a good little landing page if you want to start your day off looking at some 
volatility analytics. There's quite a few there for you to sink your teeth into. All right, let's sink our teeth into some analysis of the week. Let's go out to the Mayak's hot seat before he wraps his car around a tree or a deer because he's getting so heated talking about Vol. Mr. Rhodes, sir, what is lighting up your tape on yet another interesting but somewhat quiet week in the Vol world? Well, you know, it's an interesting, it, it, interesting, quiet, but surprising to me week. I, I, you know, when I was on the pro Q and A the other day, we, we were talking about how last week on Wednesday, I publicly said, I think we could get to an 18 handle on Vix by the end of the year. And it happened the next day. There you go. You are now uh, Balstradamus, sir. There. Yeah, now I'm Balstradamus. Um, but, but I expected it to stay down there. So I'm not sitting here tooting my own horn. Oh, you are really no longer, I revoke your Balstradamus status. It was very short lived. Yeah, no more. I'm not, I'm not, I kind of like that nickname. Um, but it, but it would be, anybody on that, on the, that has ever listened to the network would know through my, um, lack of success with the, uh, crystal ball that I am not. <laughs> you were kind of infamous <laughs> swinging for that upside for many years on the show. I was, I just wanted to, it was kind of like one of those, you know, I just wanted to have one really good market call and, and hang my hat on it. But back, back to this week, uh, I really am surprised at uh, the 22 on VIX. I, I just, I, I don't know what it is that people are expecting between now and, and you know, early January that, that they would be bidding up the implied, you know, the 30-day implied ball. Um, I, I know we've got a Fed meeting, but I think everybody's, you know, pretty, pretty set on how that's going to go. And we really haven't had a whole lot of volatility around the Fed meeting so far. I don't know if maybe they think this one's going to be different or what, but um, I, I, you, you know, we, I rarely say this, but I do think VIX is too high relative to where it should be right now. Interesting. Uh, the man who's trying to be Vol Stradamus out there may have, may have to vie with our Oracle of New Hampshire uh, for that title out there, the Vol Prognosticator out there. But interesting. You think Vol is too high. Now let's go out to the land of the grumpy man wakes up every morning and says, why do I live in this hellhole? That's the Rock Lobster. Mr. Rock Lobster, sir, uh, do you concur with that? Do you think vol is too high? And what are your thoughts on what we're seeing out there, sir? Well, I think, um, let's see, is vol too high? Um, I think the problem is, I think, based on if you go like, current conditions. So this week we had two two percent down moves. Um you know we had that VIX VIX like Russell said rolled in at a low kind of like the low tick on Friday. Um and then we had a couple of you know then we kind of sold off from 406 down to 390 ish you know like right around there spy wise. So um and and that caused uh volatility to you know to tick up because you know um, you know, VIX moves up when SPX moves down and then vice versa, you know, volatility per strike stays the same. VIX will still move up, but Russell can correct me if I'm wrong, but VIX will just go up all by itself when SPX goes down because the, what it's calculated. So, so you kind of have that, right? So we've, we've now gone where the new at the money, basically volatility is higher than it was on Friday or Friday of last week. And the market is not quite ready to sell that at the money vol lower. There isn't that uh, um, what we'll call just demand to sell. It. People aren't out there doing it. And I was just doing a thing that with Mark looking at vol Q versus VXN, and that's like that's at the lowest level in two years or three years or, or forever since they started listing that product. So. Out of the money volatility is relatively like the skew is relatively flat um, to the at the money right now. And to me, that means the at the money is already well priced. Um, like my my closet saying with skew is the steeper the skew is, the more the market doesn't like the at the money ball, right? Meaning they think like we might not be doing something now, but we're going to be doing something later. And then right now, at the money vol is more well priced, meaning it's it's kind of full and fluffy, um, and there's no uh, 
there's no demand up and above that ball level for the out of the money. Again, this is just observation when I traded the SPX and and like a zillion equities over the years. So I think that's what we have right now. So when, when I think when Russell's saying, I think VIX is too high, it's like it's priced high because we've, we've sunk down to that, but we're not moving. So <laughs> I would I would agree with them that the ball is just sitting out there until there's, you know, until these events are over and they now everybody can come in and sell it because they feel good. Um, just I think there's a little bit of reticence right now to go in and just whack, uh, whack a doodle all the, um, you know, the 30 day ball. Um, that's that's how I see it. And that's how I'm looking kind of at the at the ball picture right now. And another reason, too, is you've got that, you know, um, if you're going like full Vic di- VIX diagnostics, you've got uh, 28 volatility or so still in SPX for next week. Uh, at the money, I haven't checked it since this morning, but let me look, take a look. Yeah, like the D15 strike is still 19, 29 ball. So you got this weird, you know. And again, I agree with Russell. Like we ain't moving right now. We had the move at the beginning of the week. We moved down to a higher ball at the money. They didn't take that ball down, and they're gassing the crap out of the ball next week because it's basically like another earnings, you know. But with the Fed, with the whole thing that the fed does um and i think we could have like a crazy washout in vix <laughs> come thursday friday next week if everything kind of goes to plan so that's you know i i think one part is you know liquidity providers they're not like you always gotta they're lazy all right so they're happy to leave the vault where it is if there's no reason for them to move it and they're not incurring any additional. Inventory. Um, and this would be an interesting study for Russell is how much like this daily option ball option trading and SPX is like changed away, you know, traders price the 30 day, 60 day and out because there's literally like infinite gamma available on a daily basis. It's not, <laughs> it wasn't like that when you traded in the SPX and I traded in the SPX. <laughs> <laughs> um sometimes there was no gamma anywhere <laughs> to, to to purchase and speak now, for yourself i always had infinite gamma available yeah exactly but now it's a little different now um you know wow you, like okay how many how many daily spx straddles do you want to buy i want i mean I when you were out yeah, there when you were out there there weren't millions of contracts expiring the same day going up all the time i don't know what you're talking it, about uh, exactly but uh, wait, wait, so I, I, you know, I, I look at all these things and these are, this is new stuff, right? Of course, it's going to keep Russell in business for the next hundred years, probably, as they add all these new goodies. But I just, I see, yeah, I think, you know, volatility is priced out of the at the money because we've got more, uh, because we slid down there, the market slid down a pretty good amount at the beginning of the week and we haven't done anything since. Um and yeah, it's overpriced for, I mean, look, we're getting a, you know, SPX has moved five bucks today or something, right? So a 22 and a half vol is expensive. 29 vol for next week is expensive. But it's, I think it's still all around this CPI number. I think the producer price number said what everybody thinks. Inflation still sucks. It's not as bad as it was. Um, and we're going to see that food prices aren't getting any lower, as anybody who goes to the grocery store knows. But energy prices definitely are coming down. Like gas prices are down, that gas is down from those nosebleed crazy levels uh, in the springtime. So I don't know when all this other stuff, you know, starts to help. I mean, assume house prices get lower, cars get lower, but flying or buying food, if you go to a restaurant, you know. Buy a couple of Chipotle burritos, something I would never do, by the way. But um, like 30 bucks or something. <laughs> it's crazy. So there are these. Anyway, so the, the short answer from a vol point of view is I think vol's here because we've drifted down to those strikes and we haven't had any activity yet. And nobody has come in to hit that, you know, that ball hard enough to make it go down, which might change next week. Tell me about restaurant inflation. My son wants to go to Gibson's for his birthday later today. So that'll be some fun restaurant inflation 
I forget your Chipotle. <laughs> I can't. I can't even imagine what this is. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun out there. But speaking earlier, we were talking about the Valstradamus. I think I might have to claim that title. Just from earlier this week, Mr. Rock Lapson, you attempted to throw me a curveball and tried to get me to prognosticate and guess on the 180-day historical vol of the SPX. And I nailed it within like a tenth of a point, maybe two tenths of a point. It was kind of eerily precise. I might, I might have to take that vol Stradamus title. But that goes back to Mr. Rock Lobster. This 180-day vol is something that you've been looking at for a while. In fact, it prompted the once in future Dr. Bix and myself to discuss it on the pro Q&A earlier this session and kind of come to the realization that we have been in two different, very markedly different regimes for a 180-day vol, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. We sent you that graph that he put together. And you can certainly see we are in a different era right now. But I know that's a data point you've been fixating on for a while. Why is 180-day realized vol for the S? A time period most people don't look at. Why is that what you're zeroing in on right now? What's intriguing to you about that? Well, I, I, you know, um, volatility, it's just where vol can go, right? So I trade vol from how low, for how low it can go, right? That's how I set up a lot of my trades. I, I found it easier over time till I go, okay. Um, and it, it changes the dynamic when you think VIX can, the low is 20, 16, or 12 on the type of trade you put on. Um, so if I think VIX can only go to a 20 low because that 180 vol is still like in the mid 20s, like there's just not a lot of downside or I get more aggressive covering a delta at 20 than I would normally. In the old days, 20 would be like, woohoo, right? You're on, <laughs> you're on your way to 16. You know, there's like, woo, there's dollars to be made. The fact that I can buy a 20 put with two weeks to go in, in VIX for 30 cents is absurd to me. Like it's, that's, that is so crazy. And I, I you know if Russell did some read, like I tired, like I'm buying the 23 puts in June, the 22 puts in January for a buck, like a buck 10 or something. So I just, in my brain, it, it gives, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it doesn't compute, right? Like that's a put that should be worth seven or eight bucks in the old days. And I mean, pre pandemic days, where that, those puts never go anywhere now. Maybe. You know, you pay a dollar, like maybe you get two, two and a half bucks, right? And I totally, this last year when they when I made money on them, I'm like, woo, okay, we're going to see. And then I'm like, something is wrong. Like, I'm like, I am not looking at this right. Because every time these puts make money, every, the market just goes ripping the other way. So I'm like, okay, okay. And then just like, okay, go back to some fundamentals, you dummy. And it's just like, you know, just we're not getting any stretches of market volatility that are low enough to bring the, the, all the averages down. It's always math. Like, you know, and I know that, um, but I, I kind of thought since, you know, the COVID thing was quote unquote over, you know, uh, you, everybody can argue about what that is or not, but you know, we're not thinking we're going to die tomorrow. Right. So I, I thought I would see a reduction in underlying vol from that. And I looked, I'm like, wow, I'm totally wrong. Totally wrong about that. Um, so as long as that number remains relatively high and we don't, I don't see any of the averages really pulling down. They're starting to, they're starting to arc down a little bit though. Um, it just changes the way I, you know, where, how you set up a trade and what you think you can make on it. Um, Cause you can't put any trade on without having some idea of where the underlying can go in, in a, in a statistically important, you know, significant way. You know, that's um, true. That chart, looking at that chart now, it does put those June 15 puts into a different context, does it not? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> like, and, and I'd say, in any other time in the last 10 years, you would say, that trade is a lot. That's a screaming deal of the century. And you look at that chart, it's you're like, lot, oh. Right? And I see, right I see now, now why they're offered it a dime all I could possibly want. <laughs> right now, you're like, eh, I don't know. I don't know now. So it's I don't I don't know if, if uh, Dr. Vix has opened up like the, the vault on all these numbers or whatever, but clearly he's looked. He's like, yeah, wow, there's definitely I mean, this this post pandemic, I think uh, another thing with the higher vault is all of the QE and all of the pump and all the stuff that the Fed is that that just puts such an enormous change in how the market reacts. Like all of a sudden, you know, you have 8% up moves in, in, a, in a week and a half. 
like that didn't happen, you know, before we got the Fed got so active in the market in QE. You know, you it, it would take a while for a move like that to come off. You know, the Fed used to say, "Hey, we're gonna." All right, we're going to loan something to this, and then the market would kind of go up, or when everybody thought there was a panic and it wasn't a panic, stuff like that. But I mean, this is happening on, you know, that would happen like once every six years. Like we are having these, you know, how many 8%, 7% moves have we had over a two week period this year alone? And then last year, and then in 2020, right? And so you crazy amount of uh, shenanigans going on, and it really just pumps the upside up, I think. But Curious, if Russell's any thoughts he has on this? On my, well, my uh, actually, I was going to, I was going to, I was, I was going to turn around and ask, why did you look at one eighty and seven to ninety three days? And the reason I asked is because everybody, I, I feel like that's the second most quoted VIX, is that ninety three day one. So oh, I'm curious why you decided to look at a six month period. Um, the only reason the six month period is I always like what just happened in that six months. There's nothing special about it. It's just I try to assign, uh, you know, and when I was a floor trader, there were guys that just ran their sheets on the one year vol. Right. They're like, OK, here's the one year vol. And any and they would not move their sheets from the one year vol. So, you know, even when vol was sky high, they were selling until their brains caved in and they just had to make sure they didn't lose all their money until vol came back. Right. So, you know. You could have done this this year and be taken out to the cleaners, you know, because uh, of the, those numbers are so high. And one year vol is very high, too. So I just the to me, the only I just pick numbers because I try to assign an, an, an event cycle with the number. That's all I do. I so like, OK, if this is like the last six months, right, was batshit crazy as far. I mean, we we discussed it on the show many times. Right. <laughs> like. Every time we had a catastrophe, they invented a new catastrophe to go on top of the old catastrophe, right? So, and, and that produced that ball. So nothing, I wish I had, I don't have any magical reason. It's just, I tend to do things from an event cycle because um, that's the way my brain got programmed at a young age, for good or for worse, <laughs> bad or worse. All those years of childhood trauma, they lead you to a 180-day realized ball. Who are we? To judge such things. Let's, let's keep on rolling. Let's go a little bit forward, shall we, listeners? Go out to the volatility term structure. See what's lurking out there. When we kicked off the show, the front portion of that VIX futures curve, as you might expect, ticking a wee bit up. The DS future up, not quite one and a half points, about 1.4 points. And the Jan future up ever so slightly, a little more than half a point, about six tenths of a point. I'm sure if we re-rack those now, they'd probably be still right around that same level. Not a heck of a lot going on out there right now uh mr once in future dr vix we shall start with you sir anything lighting up your tape out there in the realm of the volatility surface this week sir nothing nothing's really stood out um I, I, maybe i should maybe just to backtrack just a little bit on my i feel like but vix is uh is too high um let, this time last week i was really surprised at the premium that december had relative to spot vix and VIX moved and the future didn't. And maybe I should have uh, paid a little bit more attention to, you know, to that spread and think, well, maybe the, uh, you know, the, the, the guys that caused the market action that puts the VIX future where it's at, maybe, they're, maybe they know something I don't know, or maybe they're expecting something I'm not expecting. Because uh, the spot index came right back to the future pretty quickly. Uh, or mashed right back up with it. It narrowed the spread. Normally, it's the other way, where the future kind of works its way down to the index. So just a little reminder to pay a little bit more attention to, to, the, to the term structure that I have. <laughs> um, if, if, and, you know, I'm driving, so visually I can't totally picture it. But when I've been looking at it recently, it's kind of nice that we seem to be in a, a, a more normal term structure. You know, like one that I would print off and put in the book and this is what it normally looks like uh which you know maybe that's an indication we're going to return to some normalcy in 2023 i don't know we've been saying that for a while now maybe just this new year can just kick off quietly and then every year has been more insane out of the gate than the last so at this point i i hesitate to even predict put my volatile hat on predict what the hell 
could happen at the beginning of 2023. It's terrifying if past is prologue. Instead, let's go back out to the land of the dark and stormy shores. Mr. Rock Lobster, would you concur? Are we looking at right now? Is this your prototypical normal term structure? If you were writing the book right now, would you screenshot this and put this in the book as the stereotypical example of your typical VIX term structure, sir? Uh, it it has all the hallmark, uh, 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 hallmarks, I would say. Um, I Literally, it's, it's within... Uh, so the Jan, Feb, March, April, May, like we we had we option pit did a regression line, believe me, not super complicated, but all those are within um, eight cents of where they should be, essentially at this part in the in the cycle. The only one that is not is the December, uh, and for the reasons that I cited earlier, right? Um, that like that short term, the December vol, uh, the December vols are just higher from this cycle and you know in the december future is now looking at you know options that are are right around there so um you, I, you have to do all the complicated stuff with vix future is looking at this is going to settle where and da, 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 but um um just that that very front end is still um you know it that that cash in historically would be a little lower relative to December, I believe. Um, and just right now it's like sitting right on the number with 10 days to go, which is relatively high for VIX. And I think that has all to do with all of the news that is coming out next week. But the rest of the curve yeah. is, is very normal. Let's go see what's going on out there in the land of the vol options right now. Listeners, Let's start in Spike's land. Of course, you can see all this data for yourself. So I usually send you over to myxoptions.com slash Spike. You can still go there, but why go there? And you can go to the Volatility Hub and get everything all in one space, including what's going on in Spike's options. We'll do a quick top five in Spike's options right now. Let's look at number five. We've got the D's 24s. This all looks pretty similar to last week in terms of contracts. I think some of the sizes have changed a little bit, but contract-wise, still pretty much the same. Number four, we got the Jan 19s. Number three, we got the D's 25s. Number two, we got the... These tens, this is the kind of paper I look forward to now in Spikes, the weirdly in the money contracts going up. And then the number one position out there in Spikes options this week, the Dece 26 calls. So outside of the tens, I think you can call it relatively normal paper and also all calls all the time, which is kind of intriguing. Getting out to VIX options this week, kind of an anemic week, all things considered from a VIX options perspective. And that is reflected yet again. And the numbers we're seeing today, as of right now, 195,000 contracts on the tape in VIX land. The ADV also continuing to go in the wrong direction. 543,000 contracts, down 12,000 from this time last week. Then again, we are rolling on into December. So <laughs> the latter half of December, not historically known as a rock'em sock'em period for VIX options volume. So we shall see if this ADV can muster its way back to 600k before the end of the year i tend to think no but crazier things have happened when you hear some of the numbers in this week you might be surprised the adv is as high as it is but before we get there <laughs> let's go to the top 10 size positions what is open out there in vix options right now listeners and once again this week we are looking at a shutout 10 calls no puts in the top 10 size vix positions Read into that what you will, listeners, but if you're a put lover out there, this is not the place for you yet again this week. By the way, 10.2 million contracts open in Vixland. That's a fair amount of OI, so nothing to sneeze at out there. Cost you 145,000 contracts to break into the top 10 in VIX. That's around the usual level, maybe a little bit high. That gets you to the Feb 70s, so right out of the gate, listeners. We're going crazy upside right out of the gate. No messing around in VIX options these days. Uh, number nine, 149,000 of the Dece 40s. Again, you know we're in that weird time, listeners, and the Dece 40s seem, oh, that seems kind of normal. <laughs> number eight, a buck 51 of the March 80s. Right back to it, listeners. Uh, number seven, 153,000 of the Dece 70s. So again, back to that 70 strike. Uh, number six, Probably the most normal trade we have on here. <laughs> we have 159,000 of the Dece 26 calls. What is that doing on this list? That is far too normal. Get out of here. We need, we need nothing but uh, far out of the money nonsense for the rest of it. And we are obliged by number five, 168,000 of the Feb 80s. 
Number four, 186,000. Are they also comparatively somewhat normal? These 35s, of course, if this was a normal period, these 35s would seem outlandish. But again, that shows you where we are and where we have been recently. Uh, number three, 209,000 of the March 75s. Number two, 221,000 of the Jan 70s. And then number one, listeners, yet again, 402,000 of the Dees 30s. That's an interesting strike. Also, I do believe part of that uh, ratio upside vertical we've been seeing going up for size for quite a while. Hence why a comparatively normal strike is doing so much paper. But still, Dees 30 is number one with a bullet. 402,000 contracts on the tape. Let's do a quick a rundown here of what's going up out there today. By the way, speaking of rundowns, Mr. Rhodes is driving, so I do not want him to get into a horrible life-altering accident. So I shall spare him from having to do a Russell's Weekly Rundown. So alas, listeners, all of you who are tuning in just to hear Russell's music, there can't be any music without the rundown, listeners. So alas, as fun as it will be to hit that button, we cannot. So instead, today, like I said, 195,000 contracts on the tape. The big dog, such as it is, 22,000 of the Jan 22 puts. Number two, 15,000 of the Dees 35s. Number three, 14,000 of the Dees, excuse me, Dees, February. February 35s and number four, 14,000 of the Feb 25 puts. Uh, number four, we've got 13,000 of the Feb 21 puts. And then number five, 8,400 of the Dees 47 halves. Those expire on the 21st. So two, three, and four listeners all were in Feb there in case you... In case you missed that, number two, or I should say number two, yesterday, Thursday, again, this week, a lot of twos on the docket this week, which is because not a lot of paper. Thursday, 269,000 contracts on the tape. That's it. Usually we see that by the time we do the show. So pretty light. Uh, number one, such as it was, 26,000 of the Dees, 19 puts. Number two, 25,000 of the Feb 60s. So back at it there. Number three, 20,000 of the D 17 puts. Number four, 20,000 of the Jan 23 puts. And rounding out the top five, 8,400 of the Feb 35 calls. Wednesday, even more anemic, 240,000 contracts on the tape on Wednesday. Again, just a weak, 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 which, again, that makes the numbers we saw in November, 922 million contracts, that much more surprising. Big dog, such as it was on Wednesday, 19,000 of the D's 30s. Number two, 15,000 of the Dees 26s. Number three, 11,000 of the Dees 37 halves. Number four, 10,000 of the Dees 42 halves. And rounding out the top five on a pretty light all Dees day, about 10,000 of the Dees 20 puts. Tuesday, a little bit more paper, 419,000 contracts on the tape. The big dog on Tuesday, 24,000 of the Dees 28 calls. Number two, 23,000 of the Dees 30s. Number three, 19,000 of the Dees 20 puts. Number four, 17,000 of the Feb 21 puts. And rounding out the top five on a decently active Tuesday, 16,000 of the Jan 26 calls. And then kicking off the week on Monday, ironically, the busiest day of the week so far, 485,000 contracts on the tape for Monday. We saw 38,000 for number one of the Jan 25s. Number two, 22,000 of the D's 25s. Number three, 20,000 of the D's 23 puts. Number four, 20,000 pretty much exactly of the Jan 19 puts. And rounding out the top five on a decently active Monday, 18,000 of the Jan 24 puts. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, like I said, I would spare you from the ignominy of hearing your theme while you're driving. I don't want to drive you off the road, sir. But anything catching your eye out there from a VIX options perspective on a admittedly light week, sir? Well, what I, 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 I'm i going to throw a curveball at you, and I apologize. I would have texted this to you in advance. But, you know, there's been a lot of discussion around VIX not uh, not acting the way that, it, that, that people think it should because we've got so many more SPX options to trade now. And a little voice in the back of my head while you were talking said, I wonder if that's taking away from VIX volumes as well. If you wanted to be, you know, if you're, you know, if you want to be short volatility for a very short period of time, you've got some pretty good, you know, you've got, Pretty good options in the SPX arena to do it with, regardless of what your time frame is now, short short term. Whereas you may have put on a VIX trade because VIX moves so fast in short periods of time in the past. So I, I'm I'm wondering if people that are that have an outlook on volatility are using the really short dated SPX options instead. 
And, yeah. that, and that's having an impact on all the volumes that you just talked about. You know, the SPX daily explosion, it is quite the explosion. And you're right. If that's taking up all the oxygen in the room, maybe there isn't much left for folks to come sling their crazy Jan 135 calls and VIX anymore. <laughs> well, and, and really, this, this, there are lots of things that have been different in the past couple of years. So I guess we're allowed to say it's different this time with respect to the market. Um, but you know, for, for VIX, usually you see, you'd see a peak in volume that's associated with, uh, excess market volatility, then it would taper down a bit and then it would come back up. And we haven't seen that recover, I think, since COVID, since the beginning of COVID. Um, and you, you know, you would think that the normal cycle, we would have, it would have come back up. I'm really wondering if, if these other, you know, these other products are cannibalizing the VIX a bit. You know, we were just looking at those numbers yesterday with uh, the Flowmaster on the option block, and it is, it is just stunning how much SPX paper is going up in that zero DTE phenomenon. Now, we were just joking about it yesterday, but I ran the numbers. I ran not just the top ten, not just the top twenty, but the top forty most active contracts yesterday in SPX. Thirty-six of the top forty were expiring that day. Only four contracts in the top forty were anything else. I mean, that's just that's just phenomenal. I, I've never seen a product just go from zero to 60 yeah, like yeah. that, <laughs> let alone in the SPX, which is a, as about established of an institutional product as you get. And just to have it be transformed almost overnight like this. You're right. There probably are a bunch of unintended consequences that we really haven't figured out yet. Maybe it's the fact that VIX isn't performing like we think. Maybe that is attributable to that. Maybe the fact that VIX just isn't doing much from an options volume perspective is attributable to that. Maybe a lot of things can be pointed at the the just great black hole, the giant sucking sound that is SBX daily options. I don't know, Mr. Rock Lobster, what do you think about that theory? Do you think the fact that VIX is not doing anything is because everyone's off their plane in SPX, or is this everyone still kind of hungover from the trip to fan from Thanksgiving? <laughs> I, I, I personally think there's a lot to Russell's theory. Um, Mark launched a hugely successful, uh, like day, basically like an end of day trading product and SP, uh, and SPX, like trading the dailies. Um, and, uh, it's, it's got a lot of interest and, you know, VIX is interesting. Who what was the, uh, what were the two brothers? Oh my gosh. It, it's killing me. I can't remember them. The, the Thompson uh, the twins Thompson brothers, right? and the mullet and Tulum in infamy. Yes, your your big money in VIX is made like you're not making any money between 16 and 20. You're making it, you know, on the way to 12 and when it blows out above 20. Like, and I feel like we've been stuck, you know, kind of more in the middle range where you don't really get the big bang. You know, the cool thing about VIX is, buy, VIX is buying call spreads for a buck that went to six bucks, right? And like the, I think the, I don't know if irony is the right word, but the odd part of is I feel like when VIX is higher, the contracts move less um, it, because one is the implied vol blows up. They get real expensive. And if you get stuck around like, you know, if you're getting pinned between 25 and 30, you're not getting that, you know, you're not getting the action for a contract buyer. I think it's it's more suited to the con people that like to sell a wall because uh, you basically have expensive juice that doesn't really go anywhere. Um, SPX on a daily. You got, you got all the excitement you could possibly get, right? You you, you can buy contracts that start the day at, you know, a buck, and they go to ten bucks. So, if for people that just want to shoot, uh, or you know, or they think they know where the market's going, it's going to be very appealing. And I think that also, uh, you know, and it's in its instant hedging. Like, if you buy the, you know, the. 395 the 3950 put expiring today you know you have instant gamma there there's no question right if you buy a thousand of those you know you have instant gamma um and you're like and if you think oh today looks ugly or the week looks ugly i'm just gonna buy those screw it and it's cheaper right you're like oh, i'll just buy those and it gets me through the week maybe or however you want to trade it you know there's a zillion ways so I, I think there's definitely something to it. Um, and when VIX starts ranging again, 
um, and gets kind of locked out of this uh, this kind of torpor that it's in because of again because I think because the real life is also high, right? It's just it's hard for it to get to that. You know what makes VIX fun is when it goes down to twelve and then boom, it shoots to eighteen and then that eighteen ball dies and it's back to you know it's that's the more fun range to trade the product. Oh, it's going to break out. I bought these junk calls, these thirty calls for you know. Like 50 Cent used to do, right? You don't see him around anymore because there's no point for him to buy anything. There's nothing to buy because things, you know, we're already stuck at a 30 vol forever, right? In the old days, 30 would have been like a fleeting number. Um, so, you know, people aren't dumb. They're going to go to where the action is. And VIX was where the action was for a decade, basically. Um, and now they're going to that, the daily SPX, you know, when you have two, Two percent, two and a half percent per day in SPX, almost a hundred points. There's a lot of action <laughs> for call buying there or put buying um, on daily options. So I think there's a. I think it would be interesting to see the uh, the professional uh, order flow there. And I'm sure Dr. Vix will give us some kind of statistics on that. Yeah, we're probably he's probably wetting his whistle now, salivating over the prospect of new things to research. Yeah, you know, I've never seen, uh, like I said earlier, a product go. It wasn't quite zero. That's not quite correct because SPX did exist. SPX dailies even existed. We just didn't have the full weekly gamut at our disposal. Apparently, that's what was missing. Those other two days, once they had it, those two days, it was like a light bulb went off across the entirety of the options business. Everyone said, oh, now I want to trade SPX and I want to do it all single day. I've never seen anything quite like it. It's a, it's a fascinating just shift of the entire business, it seems like. And that's going to have unintended consequences. So I guess we'll have to start digging into those. Maybe one of those is this. Maybe the near-dated VIX paper going to flock into SPX instead. Is that happening to you, listeners? We already have a poll right now. A lot of you folks are loving the dailies. And we asked you earlier, what are you using the dailies for? And a lot of you said near-term speculation. Are you using them instead of, let's say, weeklies in VIX or spikes? I'm curious. Hit us up. Let us know. We're kind of coming up against it, so we'll roll through some of these quick ones. Not a lot going on in SPKX or SPKY this week. SPKX at about a 23.20 right now, up about a point. Uh, Good old Sparky, a.k.a. the levered product, 21.60, up about 1.3 points. Neither of them really doing a ton of paper out there. Uh, Our old friend SVIX also falling into a similar category out there. At about a 14 when we kicked off the show, a little bit shy of that. That's down about four tenths of a point. It's at about a 1380 right now. So that puts it down about six tenths of a point from where it was this time last week. Uh, not a heck of a lot of paper out there, a whopping 26 contracts on the tape today. So that's pretty light. That's lighter than we've seen in quite some time. Uh, the ADV also going in the wrong direction. Sub a thousand again. It's down to 973. In terms of size positions, what is open out there in SVIX? There are some size positions. We got about 2,300 of the Jan 14 calls, which is an at the money strike right now, and about 2,200 of the D13 calls. So maybe a bit of a time spread there. Interesting stuff. And then 1,200 for number three of the D12 calls. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, you kind of came to the defense of SVIX yesterday on the Pro q and You say you like it. In fact, you've been doing a lot with it. Not in the options, but in the underlying. What is it about SVIX that resonates with you these days, sir? Well, I like that it gives you that, you know, the the one times short volatility exposure. Uh, and that's the only place that you can get it in, in an ETF, ETF format. So I like that an awful lot. You know, over time, it's going to continue to grind higher. So I like it as a, as a very long-term hold. Um, I do sell calls against my long position in it. Uh, in fact, uh, I sold some D14 calls this morning. Uh, again, and, and bought some more shares just to, with the assumption they'll get called away from me next Friday. There you go. Uh, so, I'm, a, I'm a huge S. Vicks fan. So that 2300 of the Jan 14 calls, that's all you. That's all Dr. Vix. That's where we can describe that um, position to. I, I'd say about a, about a third of it. <laughs> There we go out there. Ubix doing a little bit more action out there. Ubix uh, 680. Ubix racing UBXY for the the March to Zero award right now. We have not lived through a reverse split in Ubix yet, so it'll be interesting to see what they do with that one. We don't know what their what their plans are for that one. Even though it has ticked up a little bit more, it's at about a 690 right now. It's up about half a point on the week. 
Uh, in terms of paper, we saw a decent amount of action going up out there, about 5,100 contracts on the tape right now in UVix. The ADV a little bit shy of 7,000, about 69.29. That's pretty much the same from what it was this time last week. In terms of size positions out there, because we are coming up against it, let's go out here really quickly. Uh, number one, we got the Got the D7s expiring today, 2,600 of those. That's the top position out there. So those are going the way of the Dodo. And also right at the the money strike. Interesting. Number two, 2,000 of the Dece monthly, 18 puts. Number three, we have 1,300 of the Dece, 11 puts. Uh, Let's go out to uh, Uvix as well. I know this is one a lot of you have been watching eagerly out there. I'm talking about UVX, UVXY. <laughs> I, I'm, even I'm getting confused between the two of them now, listeners. Uh, UVXY, people have been asking about the reverse split. Not today, listeners, because we got it ticking up yet again, up almost half a point, about 0.45, trading right around seven and three quarters right now. Uh, seeing a little bit of paper out there as well, about 94,000 contracts on the tape today. The ADB 240,000, that is actually down. It's down about 13,000 from this time last week. Is the SPX daily explosion, is that going to steal some paper from these ever-eroding beauties out here as well? I guess we'll find out. Uh, The top positions out here in UBXY, 21,000 for number one of the D7 halves. Those are going out today, so interesting. Number two, 20,000 of the D monthly, 39 calls. That's quite a disparity. Number three, 20,000 of the Jan 10 calls. Number four, 19,000 of the Jan 75s. Now we're getting at it. And the number five of the top positions in UVXY, 19,000 of the Dece, also expiring today, seven puts. Intriguing. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catching your eye out there in the lands of UVIX or UVXY? And also, have you or your little birdies heard any info on any impending reverse splits? Dare I say it 10 for one, sir? Let's do it. The 10 for 1 split, I think, would there would be very few announcements that would make mall traders happy. That would be that would be a celebration for the ages, sir. I, I just <laughs> the amount of put buying. You could go buy the 40 puts in uh, UVXY and then just go away. You're done. You're good. You've done your trading for the year. It is. Uh, it would be a thing of beauty. I have not heard it. Uh, in the last time I traded it, I I had. Uh, I bought some nine puts a couple of weeks ago, um, closed them, made a little money on them. And then it just, I think UVXY dropped another 75 cents or something. So, um, yeah, this is the part, spot where they're going to announce the the, uh, the split here. So, um, yes, I'm, I'm hoping for 10 to 1. Uh, I'm going to guess it's not going to happen. And they're going to do something wimpy like 6 to 1 or 7 to 1 or something like that. Something just to screw everybody up and make the strikes really complicated <laughs> on the split. Yeah, it, it probably will be six to one, but ten to one, that would be nice. I'm just I'm just putting it out there into the ether. Maybe the ball gods will smile on us. This time next week, UVIX or UVXY with a 70 handle. How nice would that be? I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there into the world. You know, you put good out there, it comes back to you. Mr. Rhodes, any thoughts on UVXY or UVIX, well, sir? I know we're up against it, but I want to add fuel to the fire on that one. Um, maybe the reason they haven't done the split yet is so they can do a 10 for one. So they're waiting until a four handle. Now, normally, normally, normally they do it when we, you know, when, when you get a nine handle, that's normally when we get that reverse split mm-hmm. and it's, you know, a funky six or seven or whatever. Well, maybe they're like, Hey, instead of doing that, why don't we, you know, why don't we let it get just a bit lower before we announce the split and we can do 10 for one. But then again, that still gets us to like a forty. I think I think the Rock Lobster and I are looking for a nice juicy seventy handle. That would be that would be the Christmas gift. I think we yeah. all want at the end of the day. You know, the Christmas gift you folks want is for us to hit a bullseye in our crystal ball. So let's find out right now. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody, welcome to the Crystal Ball. Really quickly, let me just pay off our question of the week before we get to the picks. And we asked you, because it is so relevant, we're just talking about it all show. What is your favorite new, quote-unquote, option product that you've added to your trading arsenal this year? Gave you three choices and the infamous other. Bitto options, which ran ran away with it early, then not so much. Uh, Number two, the infamous SPX daily options now. Uh, Number three, the SVIXs and UVIXs and SPKYs of the world. We lumped them all together because they're not doing a ton of paper. Or... The infamous other. And as it comes to a close, listeners, 71% of you 
choosing the SPX daily options, which again, the volume doesn't lie. This is, this is the product of the year by just about any, any calculation out there. It's, it's truly stunning how much paper is going up. Maybe I can launch a new show, the SPX daily show, just how much freaking paper is going up out there. It's crazy town. Uh, number two, Bitto options, 16.1%. So it was winning early on and then it just got outpaced by the SPX dailies. Number three, 9.7% only for our Vol ETP friends. So no love there. 3.2% for other. If you are listening live, you have about an hour or two left to vote. If you're listening after the fact on the podcast, it will be too late. The poll will have closed. Uh, speaking of closing, our prognostications have closed. Let's see if there are any winner, winner chicken dinners. And you know what, listeners? I was the one of the lone people who was bucking the trend last week. I was picking into the 20s. Everybody else was fading it. The meatball was at an 18 handle, 1881. Even the, the Spike's father, Mr. Simon, was just barely at a 20. I was I was fighting the good fight at 2133. I was right, just not right enough, listeners. We're at about a 2266 in VIX right now. Spike's at about a 2405. So it was in my direction. I just wasn't, I wasn't optimistic enough, listeners. So alas, None of us went. I'm looking at some of the listeners. Our producer surface, I should say, uh, looks like most of the close ones. I don't see any 24 or even 22 handles here. So, alas, everyone was feeling the fade this week, and it did not come to pass. That means no winners. That means the once in future Dr. Vix gets to go first. Mr. Rhodes, you were saying all show how you feel Vix is too high. So, I have a feeling I know where you're going to go, but what are you feeling for this time next week? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to do a 1950. Uh, I think we go back below 20. Um, uh, Andrew actually kind of summed up my reasoning when he said, we're going to have all the stuff behind us. You know, we're going to have the, the fed behind us. We're going to have CPI behind us. And what are we going to have in front of us? Two holidays, short and weak. So, <laughs> so I, I think there are lots of, lots of headwind things. I don't, I think a lack of news once we get those last things behind us, and uh, the holidays are, are going to create nice headwind for for VIX, and you know, and also next Friday is triple witching, but the December VIX contracts don't expire until after that. Oh, interesting point. A little bit of the mechanics of the contract, Mister Rock Lobster. I'll let you go next. What are you feeling for Vol this time next week? Um, I'm going to say I'm going into the. Um, I'm going to go 1925. Oh, squeezing in on Russell, squeezing in on well, Russell. On. What was Russell's bid? Nineteen half. Nineteen half. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll at, at least if I if I squeeze him by twenty five cents, I don't feel as bad. If I just squeezed him for a penny, I feel bad. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I won't. I like Russell, gave, so I'm not going to totally scum him. Gave him that juicy quarter of a point wiggle room. That gives me a lot of lot of area to dance, listeners. And you know me, I like a little bit more juice than these uh, these two knuckleheads here. So I'm going to say. A little bit close to where I am this week, actually. I'm going to say 21 and a quarter. So still north of 20, but not a ton. Uh, there's, there's your market this week, listeners. 19 and a quarter to the dark side for Rock Lobster. 21 and a quarter for the winner, winner chicken dinner, which will be me. All right. That music means we are done for this week. Let's look really quickly. I can't look before I give my guests. I don't want to step on any of our pro members here. Options Queen. She's been good for a while. She's at 20 and a half in the live chat right now. Option God feeling the fade. 19, 1890, actually. Uh, Nichols back up with me. 2180. Okay. Oh, Frank, you're scumming me. What are you doing? What are you, 2120. Frank, what you doing to me? And Z2313 2031. So we got a bit of a diversity of opinion just in the chat right now remember if you're listening live get your question should they get your prognostication in if you get it right you can win fabulous prizes if you're listening after the fact you have a short window to get your prognostications in as well hopefully same day and then if you if you are a winner winner chicken dinner fabulous prizes for you as well we open the fun to everyone and mr rhodes it was fun having you on the show today glad you didn't die in a horrible flaming wreck before we go <laughs> if folks want to check out what you got cooking where should they go what should they do I'm, I'm all, I, I've been freed from the paywall. So and when I'm writing up now, I'm, I'm putting up in a, I just created a sub stack and slapped it up there. Uh, Russellroads.substack.com. Um, if you follow the Option Insider on Twitter, uh, they re- you guys retweeted something that I wrote up that was the result of a question I got during the pro Q&A. So it's all intertwined. But that's, that's what I'm up to these days. 
Mr. Rhodes freed from the paywall. Now you can feel free to suck at the teat of Russell's endless ball bounty over there. Give him a follow on Twitter at Russell Rhodes. <laughs> That's a lovely image. <laughs> <laughs> Two L's. R H O A D S is the place to go. <laughs> Mr. Rock Lobster. Save me from myself, sir. Where can folks go to learn more? I, I was about to say, I, I now feel vindicated for my good goodies and Henry's uh, Henry's flow. Uh, <laughs> you, you actually outdid me on that. One. So, um, uh, oh, yes, uh, oxypit.com, 888-TRADE-01. Uh, if you want to learn how to trade vol and you're interested in all this stuff that we talk about all day long and, and see how to make usable trades out of it. Uh, Ashenpit.com, eat 888 trades one ask for Ted or other Andrew. And if you do, you get 10% off because you say you heard it here on the show. There you go. Check them out, optionpit.com. And you know where to go to learn more about all things spikes. You can go to myaxoptions.com slash spikes or to the newly minted volatility hub. And of course, that's going to do it for us on the on demand side. For all you on-demand listeners, all you pro folks, Hangouts, we'll be back in a little bit with a great options oddities to break down another fantastic week of weird, wild, wonderful, unusual activity. What trades will the Rock Lobster and I talk ourselves into in a heat, a frenzy of madness? Tune in to options oddities coming up a little bit after the show to find out. But for all of you on-demand folks, thanks for making November such a banger month and making my bandwidth bills so high. I love you all out there. Remember, if you like what you hear, keep rating and reviewing. If you want to join the options oddities, don't want your broadcast week to end, you know where to go. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro or slash secret club for all you cool kids. And we'll see you back here next week in another episode of Volatility Views. Stay safe out there, everybody. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.